All right. Muscle talk. We're just waiting on the other two guys. Anyway, Dorian Haywood, Luke, yep. and me. <laughs> you know what sucks when you're the only guy on the fucking muscle show who never turned pro? <laughs> oh, anyway. So I got this question the other day. I do this show once a week called Anabolic Academy, and somebody asked me a question. I didn't know the answer. Maybe you guys could. Uh, the question was, um, why is Prima Bowling so expensive? Why is what? Prima Bowling so expensive. <laughs> and I don't, I know some compounds are more expensive than others, but I don't know why. I don't know what makes a compound more expensive than another one. From what you know, I understand, the process to manufacture that compound and get it into the molecular form of Prima Bowling just costs more than others. Ah, that so makes sense. That, okay. Just the cost of manufacturing is much higher from what I gather. Uh, that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. And then, um, and then of course, on top of that, it's faked mostly. Uh, cause this, there's this young guy who was sending me questions and I, and I told him, dude, well, first of all, I said, go get the test kit. Cause they have like test kits. Now you can test this shit because he was worried about buying it and then it being fake. I was like, go get the test kit. It's on, like, they, I think there's one called uh, Roy Test, and it's on uh, DavePalumbo.com. I had bought it when I was competing, and you just put a couple of drops, and it's like it's a color chart. It tells you exactly what, what it is, you know? And that's really it. Anyway. So what are you doing to, uh, what kind of cardio are you doing now, Dorian? Because you, you look lean in the face. You're definitely getting leaner and harder. You can see it. Nope. Yeah. Check it. Yeah, no. Oh shit. Yeah. I'm gonna do an hour cardio after this. Wow. I've been really periodizing my day. Uh the only thing I've had to eat today, I've had two scoops away in my coffee this morning, three eggs right before I came to the gym, then uh two pieces of fish, which probably quite did the seven ounces of fish. That's mm -hmm. all I've had today. I've already worked out. Um, uh I've done posing. Then after this, I'll do some cardio. I'll do an hour. Wow. Uh you must be starving, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of oh, interesting. Not like my belly's bugging me and just screaming, feed me like it has in the past. It's just the lack of energy from not having food in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, I, like I told you in the past, man, if you ever don't feel like coming on, it's not a big deal, dude. I I know. Well, I you know I know what it's like to uh, to do low carbs in an hour of cardio. So you know, not a big deal. But I uh, take my hat off to you for doing it. That's for sure. I was he supposed to get handling it pretty well. What? What'd you say? Dorian looks like he's handling it pretty well. Yeah, tell me about it, bro. I used to take there was this wait, there was this I used to get a prescription. I don't remember the name of it. Uh that used to get it was like a, a prescription. What is it when uh, it makes you feel better? Xanax? No, no, that makes it feel down. This made you feel like energetic. Uh, fuck. I forgot. Hold on. Let me ask. Big Phil. What's up? What up? What up? Alex. What's up, Phil? Alex. What's up? What's what up? How you guys doing? What was the name of that prescription that uh, you used to give me when I competed to give me energy? Dentum, dentramine. Sorry, it was called dent dentramine or dentramine or something like that. And it used to give you a lot of energy and put you in a better, better spirits. It gets you some kind of like stimulant or whatever. What about dentramine? What is it called? What you mean? I think something like that. Yeah. Uh, but that, they were talking 10 years ago. That's so popular. Uh, I mean, that's based off the fen, fen drug back in this uh, previous generation. But fenamine is like a stimulant and also just kills your appetite. Mm. Ah, okay. It works. It's nice. Yeah, well, it used to put me in a better because there were times like you know, there's, I have something happening in my family every weekend, so I couldn't just not go, but I have to go. And then there were times where, like, oh, give me one of those pills, and I would take it. And um, I used to, you would get me through the night where I wouldn't be annoyed with everybody asking me stupid questions and shit, you know, you know, like when they, what's up, Phil? I said that's beautiful, man. They got stuff now. You could get some peptides, and it'll, it'll, you know, cut off your appetite and all that good stuff. Really? It was, but it was more well, than right? <laughs> Yeah, all the girls are using that shit, man. It's unbelievable, though. Those epic crap. But every girl I know is, eh, God forbid, you walk around the block or stop eating or something like that. You know, they got to take the the 
It's unreal. Like, why, don't, why don't you why don't you try exercising? You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they because then I heard uh, uh, the girls would tell my wife and her girlfriend was saying that all the girls from the housewives, the housewives in New Jersey, use it. So mm-hmm. I'm like, so is that is that? And you know what's funny? It's like what you're married to to me, right? So you know what you have to do. Yeah. It's like so. Why do you need this? You know what's next? You're gonna hire an electrician to put a circuit breaker panel in when you're married to one? What what what? No, because I was an electrician for 10 years before I fucking was in the sewer. I'm like, well, well you know, it's ridiculous. But anyway, one time when I first started dating my wife, and I really think she did this to make me jealous, she told me that she was thinking about hiring a personal trainer. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you guys see the Detroit Pro this year, this week? I'll pay yeah. attention. Yeah, I saw that. I saw. I saw. I saw some of it. I, I tell you, Martin Fitzwater looked good, man, and he really slammed the door at the night show. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, I honestly thought Vito was going to get it. Yeah. I thought Vito was going to get it too. <laughs> he, I didn't. When, the, he, when the, he put it around, it was. I was like, oh, this show is over. <laughs> when I, I thought he was going to get it too in the morning. I was like, God, I'm going to give this to to good Vito. And then at night, when Martin came back, and he was like. Harder and fuller. I was like, ah, oh, man. Is that, he look? He whatever he did uh, uh, from morning till night. He looked. He made a big difference, you know. But yeah, no, I thought in the morning they were gonna give it to Good Vito, you know. And he should keep going because those are two really young, good bodybuilders, you know, that have a a really bright future, you know. So we'll see. We'll see what we'll see what happens. I know uh, Good Vito's back was wider, uh, but it looked like. And it looked like Martin Fitzwater's back was like uh, thicker and had more uh, muscle on, on the bottom, bottom lat yeah. was fuller mm-hmm. and thicker and a l- lower, right? A lower lat attachment, if you will. Uh, but Good Vito was very wide and a little bit more knotty up top and whatnot. But I don't know, man. He pulled it off. He did. He looked great. Yeah, that's for sure. I can't, unfortunately, I can't see any of his progress picks because he blocked me from, from Instagram. <laughs> He blocked me. You're the one that got arrested last year, not me. I just said it, you know? Christ, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> anyway, do you know who actually really looked good in that show? I was impressed with the guy who came in third. Um, yeah. Like, I guess maybe because the show was light, like, though, you know, there was only six guys, but he looked pretty damn good. What do yeah, you guys think? I. So they gave him the most shredded award. I think Marty won the show because he's the most complete. Yeah, I think and so. And he was very thick. I yeah. thought Good Vito, he's freaky body parts and a crazy structure. But then again, he's like lacking in some areas. He's kind of incomplete. But uh, apples and oranges physique to Ronald Gordon. He came in shredded as, as I've ever seen him. Yeah. And honestly, Justin Rodriguez, how did he not win the show? Uh, I'm not saying this, he looked the best he's ever looked on that day. But he should have won that fucking show. He's slipping. Yeah, I I did. Uh, I did when I did the review. If you saw him, he looks like he's aging. He had. He looks like he has the body that's aging. His stomach's getting a little bloated. His legs are a little downsized. Uh, and um, so I don't know. I don't know if he. Because you're right. Because I said that too. I said three years ago, if you would looked at the lineup, you'd be like Justin Rodriguez is winning this, right? I mean, hands down. It's not even right. Uh, but. But you know, again, I'm not, I'm not slamming the guy. This is the career of an athlete. You go up, you hit your peak, and you're going to go down. Every athlete goes through this, including bodybuilders. It's inevitable, unless you're one of the ones with a half a brain that can retire up top, like well, maybe Lee Haney. I can't think of anybody else to be honest with you. That that is they about know. it. Who? I, I thought Jay finished when he was. I know he lost to Phil, but still, he's second in the world. Jay Cutler, Jay Cutler, yeah, he 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 finishes early. He's not much older than I am. Yeah, but his last show, he came. Wait, he he did a show where he came back and he placed like six or something like that in the Olympia. Uh, I remember yeah. that now. Yeah, yeah. so Dorian finished off on top too. Yeah, but that's questionable. Where Dorian would they? That was a gift. Dorian was really beat up. Where Lee yeah. Haney is the only guy I could think of. Where he was on top and deserved to be on top, right? 
And as he's like, yeah, I'm out eight times. I'm good. And he was like 31 years old. He had his whole life ahead of him, you know? Um, but man, it's, it, it's, it's, that is part of being an athlete. That's the way it goes. I mean, whether you're a fighter, whether you're, you know, a, anything, any kind of athlete, this is the, and you know, you're going to, you're going to get the criticisms toward the end of your career where it's like, listen, man, you know, you gotta, I mean, we've seen guys, you know, uh, make some comebacks and, um, change around, but I don't know, man, we'll see what he, what he does for the future. I don't know what he's thinking. I mean, he can't, you know, unless he's like completely delusional, he's got to be realizing like, what am I doing wrong? You know, he, you know, he can't be always blaming the judges, right? No, the, um, I think he's doing, I, I think he's doing New York. Don't hold me to it. But, um, the, the, the problem is this, I think the judges gave him a, quite a few breaks earlier. Um, even last year, I think this time it was no break because I've seen him before coming off and still place very well when he should have. Mm -hmm. I think they gave him a lot of opportunities. And this time around, I, I think Tyler was a judge. I'm not quite sure, but his opportunity ran out. You know, to get beat, honestly, by the guy that got the most trade, I think I competed against him before in the past, I think at Tampa. Um, yep. He might want to, I, I, I don't know. When you, once you start going downhill, I hate to say because I love the guy. I, I communicate with Justin a lot. And he's, he's a, a really good dude. And he always, you know, reach out to me when I'm competing and congratulate me and stuff like that. I mean, there's only two options he has. I, I, he either needs to shut it down for a while Mm -hmm. Um, because yes, he did look tired. Even in his face, he just mm -hmm. he just looked tired and beat up. Um, or once you start going to this direction where you're getting beat by people you really technically should get beat, I mean, you should be beating. Now you might want to consider walking away. I yeah. mean, I, I you know, if that was me, and I I noticed that, man, you know, I'm getting fucking second, third call outs this back to back. That's just signs. The judges are letting you know it's probably a positive time for you to walk away. Oh uh, yeah, man. What do you think, Luke? Well, uh, yeah, this is I mean, this is it's a tough, tough pill to swallow when you're you're so used to getting the first call outs and yeah. especially shows like that. Those are shows that you know he's used to being dominant in. It's mm -hmm. but it, I, it's, it's gonna be hard for him to say, okay, I gotta hang it up or you know, or you know, take a seat back or like like Phil said, maybe he needs to take a break real quick. Reiterate what he's doing. Redo, rethink of it, rethink it over and you know, come back better. He I think he can come back better. I, I, I believe so if he if he, you know, takes some time off and then comes back and tries to do it again. Go back to the drawing board, get a new coach, something like that. Yeah, and come back maybe next year and see how things go. Something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely, man. You could see that because he is a good dude. Because when he sees me in the gym, he says hello. You know, he'll wait for me across the gym or whatnot. You know, there's no, no, you know, there's no. He's he's a really seems to be a nice nice guy, no problems, whatever. You know, that still don't take away from the fact I don't see him doing a goddamn thing in the gym. <laughs> I don't see him doing shit, not a push up, nothing. Oh, <laughs> Anyway, but um, besides the Detroit Pro, we got – what's the next show coming up? New York, right? Is it New York? Yeah. Yep. It is New York. So we got – Dorian's going to be in it. We got uh, Beef Stew, uh, Nick Walker, Tonio, and possibly Justin Rodriguez. And then yeah, I don't I think – What's the guy that just came from 212? He took third in the Olympia – not last year, the year before, Kamal. No, he beat Kamal. He took second. Kamal was third. The he's Spanish going guy. To the I don't know what he is. He's a big yeah. freaking – but he has a blown-out waist, though. He's huge. I, but... Yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, he's uh, – he's. I think he's from Spain. I don't remember. Yeah, he's I don't. Going, he's going to New York. That's going to be some show, man. That's going to be some – that's going to be some stacked lineup. You know, there's going to – you know. You know, obviously, everybody's going to pick Nick to win, but – the truth of the matter is, I don't think it's a slam dunk for him. You know, I don't think it's a slam dunk for him. Uh, Antonio looked amazing in Brazil, right? If you'll see the pictures of Beef Stew, he looks real good. Yeah, you know, I actually just got. I just looked at the update today. Yeah, um, I was actually talking to Blue about him uh, last Saturday. I I told him this is the best. Um, 
Because I told I told I told um, Blue I said Stu has a great physique, but he can't focus on size. He just can't because now that's super small waist, and right now he's just holding. I mean, he's there. You know, he's just holding everything. Uh, you know, for the next four point uh, five weeks. But this is the best I've ever seen him look. And yeah. if he holds this, it, it's going to get very interesting now. Yeah, and he's a young guy. <laughs> yeah. He's a young guy too. He's not. Yeah. He, yeah, he's a young guy. And of course, Dorian is a threat to any lineup you put him in. So this is going to be one hell of a show. I so far, besides the the original, besides the uh, Arnold, this is going to be a pretty stacked lineup. This is one's pretty good because, yeah. you know that that Brazil show, man. I don't know. They're cutting the nose to spite their face. I thought Tonio should have won. And uh, we didn't spend enough time on this last year, or last last year, last week. But I mean, if you if you already have if if Raphael or Rafael, whatever his name is, already has the the trophy in his hand, everybody already knows he won. How is that going to draw other bodybuilders to come there and and compete? Because it's like it, you know, like if I'm Dorian or Luke or even Phil, and you guys decide, you know, uh, somebody they approach you to do the Brazil, the Brazil, like is Rafael going to be in there or Horse MD? I would like, never, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do Brazil. Yeah. I heard that Antonio was going to Brazil. That was probably the worst decision in the history of me being black. Right. <laughs> For real, like when I heard that, I mean, come the hell on, man. We know how Brazil runs. Right. You yeah. Know, even when he came out. I didn't hear that crazy screaming like they were doing for every Brazilian that came on that stage. You know what I mean? I think they they disrespect him a little bit, even with that. Like, you know, I, you don't go to Brazil. Americans, I hate to say it, stay out of Brazil. It's just not going to happen. No, you're not going to um, get a fair he shake. He should have went to Boston. I mean, I don't, I, I mean, Detroit, sorry. He right. should have went to Detroit, not yeah. over there. Yeah, he why did won. He, Yeah, he, oh, hands down, he would have won. He would have killed. Uh mm-hmm. yeah, I said that. I said Tonio would have would have would have won. Um Raphael, if he would have came in shape at like he was at the Columbus uh, Arnold Columbus, he would have won Detroit. Um but you know, if I'm the promoters of Detroit of the of, of Brazil, I'm saying to myself, if we keep handing him the the, the trophy, no other bodybuilder is gonna come here to to compete. So what are we gonna? What are we selling next year? We're gonna be selling nothing. There's nobody's gonna be signing up. They're gonna be why? There's no chance for me to win. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm, uh, you know. And even if he doesn't, if uh, if you got horse MD, if you have any other Brazilian bodybuilder, you know they're they're gonna get, you know, better look than everybody else, and that's just not fair. So if I have a choice, I'm not doing it. Like you said, Phil, it's it's ridiculous. You're gonna work all that hard for what? Maybe second place. You know, you want to have that mindset that you want to go to win. That's really it. But oh, his big daddy Bo. Oh. Every morning I wake up and I check my Instagram and Luke sends me uh a video, <laughs> a, a video of somebody giving me the finger. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's my good morning from Luke every morning. <laughs> I'll be at my other job all night. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Bo? What's going on, man? I don't have any problems getting in here. Oh man, you're fucked up. Let me see. Did, did I save the one that you sent me? If I save the one you sent me, I'll. I'll no, it, it's it's my iPad. I need the Christmas stuff out. It's for. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see if I could. Uh, if I can see the one that. Uh, uh, that um. Let me see. Where are we? There we go. Uh. Yeah, here it is. Watch this. This is what I wake up to all, every morning. Something to this effect. So you look like you're in. Wow, that's my buddy, man. <laughs> that's my good morning from Luke every morning. <laughs> and I know it's coming. I can't even get my day started. <laughs> like it's like coffee. I need it now. It's unbelievable. Oh, what's up, man? I ain't too much. Where uh, have you decided? Uh, what show are you doing this year or no? <sighs> no, I ain't decided yet. I'm still no? I'm just getting ready. Are those pics that you put up on Instagram, are those recent or some of them is, some of them ain't though. Oh, okay. Because the ones that you put up, they they you look pretty damn good, man. Yeah, I'm in good shape right now. I'm yeah, I was gonna that. say you just probably just pick a show and jump in, but but is it me or they're not doesn't seem to be a lot of two twelve shows going on. 
No, it, it really no. ain't a lot of two twelve. What what's the problem? Why are they? Why are they? I don't know. I don't, know. Is, I don't get it. You know, was the one at the was the was the two twelve at Detroit? I don't think so, right? No, I think uh, Detroit was just open bodybuilding. That was it. Now, was there two twelve in Brazil? No, no, no. And there's there's no two twelve on Arnold, 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 Ohio. Yeah. It's not that. Yeah. I don't know why they. Not, what's the deal with that? There are a lot of guys that you know that. I like 212 bodybuilding. It's just a short version of open bodybuilding. I don't know what the problem is. Because they, I told you, they have to pay that fee. For each class, they have to pay that sanction fee. Uh-huh. So that sanction fee is not cheap, honestly. <laughs> oh, so, right. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it went up, too, this year. And they're trying to save, they're trying to have enough money to, to, to pay out, the, which I don't think is fair, but they're trying to have the money to pay out the open more than anything, especially with all this, these uh, the prize money going up and everything. I just think it's totally unfair. I think that uh, the two twelve should be being wrapped just like every other uh, you know pro show. I know Tim get rid of it. Tim brought it back in Chicago. Uh, Tampa has it. Um, I think it's like what four or five, four or five, five about five, five, five two twelve shows. I think it out there. Yeah. yeah. Don't make any sense. I don't know because then you're not going. Oh, what about this? I, I I'm not a classic physique guy. I'm not I'm not big into classic physique. I know everybody watches classic physique, but I'd rather watch the two twelve guys because I'm more of a bodybuilding fan than classic physique. I just never. I I, I know I'm gonna get shit for saying this, but classic physique is like if there is an under six foot tall NBA, and they go, yeah, you could play, but you could play over here where you're not tall enough. Right, where in classic physique, it's like, yeah, you, you could you could go pro, but you're over there, you're not big enough, and it's just like, eh, eh, eh. and and it, it, it and it's so popular, I think, because when people look at it, I think people think it's more attainable, which it isn't for most people, right? But I think they look at it, and they look at a guy like like guy like Phil or Dorian coming on stage, you go, Jesus Christ, I'm never gonna look like that. These guys are monsters, but oh, that I could possibly do classic physique. I think that's why it's so damn popular. I don't know, uh, but the to me, physique, obviously, you know, what I mean, it just it gives that Frank Zane, uh, you know, back in the early '80s and the '70s and '80s type of look. Um, I yeah. like it. You know, what I mean, I don't have anything against classic physique. They have a whole total. It, it, it's it's a beautiful look. You know, what I mean, if I was able to get down to the weight, I would gladly do it. I just can't get down to the weight. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah. um. I just I think that they have a good flow, and uh, of course, you know, because of Seabum, I mean, it's it's going to be rated very high right now with Seabum still in the game. Yeah. Uh, but you, yeah, it is it's obtainable. You know, when you go in the open, not that everybody does this. I'm not a big fan of pushing any type of gear. I never have and never will. Mm -hmm. But in their eyes, they're like, man, to stand next to freaking you know Derek and Samson Dowda, you know, I got to push all this growth and all this gear just to be on that level. So I think that's yeah. why, you know, more people lean more towards the class of physique and the physique category uh, because they believe, which is not true, because some of them think physique competitors are taking some stuff. I was about to say the same <laughs> you know, thing, right? I was about to say the same thing. They're taking the same shit. Speaking of taking stuff, do they still backstage? Do you still uh, uh, drink red wine and eat peanut butter and rice cakes and all that good shit? When you're backstage before you get on, or eat chocolate or some candy. Some of them do it in their room before they get backstage, though. <laughs> yeah. Man, some of them be drunk, but you you just don't see it. Some of them be drunk for real. <laughs> I heard some of them even take Viagra before they get on stage. Oh Lord, I'm that, that to, get, to get to get all vascular and shit like that. Well, that wouldn't work out well if they. I don't know about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Certainly wouldn't work out for Bo. He, Take out the whole left side of the auditorium. And... <laughs> I would even go on stage. I act like I'm sick of something. <laughs> He'd kill three of the judges as soon as he came out. It'd be a too many horror show. I, 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 I'd be like my son. They get, they get, a, they get a, he would get arrested for mass shooting if he. <laughs> ah shit! Hey, so I can like... tell you one thing, though. What's up? I'm thinking about a pro, uh, open show this year, though. Really? Because if you see me around about 230, 235, you'll be like, okay, I see what you're saying. Do you have any pics up on Instagram? 
No, nah, they in my phone. I'll send it to you when we get off here. All Matter right, of fact, cool. I'll send it to you in a minute. All right. Because I was going to say, I'll just pull it up on – well, we'll pull you up anyway. Uh, Let's see. Oh, yeah, get rid of this. My morning finger. Uh, Where are we? Oh, there you are. You know, Phil, what you doing this year? Um, Possibly. I'm not 100% sure, but the shows I plan is uh, Chicago, Tampa, and Texas. Like, when it, when was this, Bo? Oh, this is old. This is old. Yeah, that's old. Uh, are any of these? What about this one in the green? That's old, or that's yeah, that's old. That's old. That was right for the Olympia, right there. Oh, but it's yeah. it's some on the like that. See that picture right there? Which one? Right this one? Up. Yeah, right there. That's Damn. that's two thirty. And that, how long ago was this? Uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, this is the February twenty second. Yeah, it says uh, seven weeks ago. It, why not? it ain't it ain't old. There you go. Hey, well, listen, why not, man? Fucking do it. Who cares? See how see how a lot of a lot of two twelve guys are doing the open, you know, and they're not like uh what is this what is that Spanish guy's name you were talking about, Phil? I can't remember his name. He's got like a I don't know, Patty knows she knows everybody's name, man. I forget him. He's got like some real Spanish name, I forgot, but I know exactly he's who you're talking about. I give him his props. Jack. He's a, he's a, yeah, he's Jack. It's just his his waist. His I know waist. exactly who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. A lot of these guys, they 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 a lot of them are using 212 as a stepping stone, right? So you had Hardy, Derek, who else? Uh, Tonio was 212 at one point, right? Yeah. Um, who else in the uh, in the top Olympia spots? Yeah, yeah. Hardy, Derek, who else am oh, I thinking of? Bonac. <laughs> Bonac was 212. Yeah, that's right. Is it, whatever happened to him? Is he competing this year or no? Yeah, he, he's, he, he's doing uh, multiple shows, what I heard. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't know. Does he have anything out? I don't think I follow him. I don't yeah, know why. He, was, he was putting pictures out, but I haven't seen anything recent. Yeah, he was. He, if Bonac can bring anything back from that, what, that on a classic look, he'll yeah. be all right. Yeah, he would, that's, that was his best look ever. Like, he yeah, was, yeah, he, he looked be all good. Right. He looked damn good. I mean, I don't think he could put much more uh, muscle on that frame, though. I mean, no, I, don't need- I, don't think that, I don't think he needs no more muscle. Yeah, no, doesn't. definitely not. Definitely, he's got you know for for a shorter guy, he's got great flow, great like you know he's just even his when his back shots are just you know they could be really lights out. With two, three years ago, four years ago, this guy was, I don't know, I don't know what you know. Hopefully, he can put it together again, but. Uh, you he know. got all the muscle he needs. I think absolutely, he, yeah. He, he bring that that dry condition. He, he still a be a threat though. Oh hell yeah! I'll see. Uh, I'll see. What, and Phil, you started. Um, you started your prep. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm. Um, I'm almost five weeks in. Wow, how much cardio you got to do now? He um uh, he added an extra five, so I'm doing um thirty five in the morning, thirty five after I work out. That's but not, it's nothing crazy. It's just low intensity cardio, and it's not too bad. That's not too no. Bad with me, I need it. Uh, like I said, you know, as you get older, more cardio comes into play. You know, you gotta look at even like Ronnie J. I mean, these guys are doing three hours of cardio. Yeah, like in the days, you know, not that I ever want to see that much. Um, but we're in a good place. And like I said, I kept my weight under three hundred on right. the off season. Um, and we basically we started early. In Chicago, we were 18 weeks out. Blue thought it was 16, but then when I calculated, it was 18. So we'll see. I'm not stepping on any stage, honestly, just to do it. Like I told Patty, I said, if I'm where I, I have to be last year's uh, Romania, I think was the best condition I brought was in Romania. Hey, um, I agree. Yeah. So I have to be, because I know how these judges see. They, they say they don't judge you from your last year. They judge what is there. I, I don't believe that is true. Um, it's human because, nature, man. Yeah, because the year before, they kept beating me in the head. That was in Tampa when you went against Ian. They kept hitting me with it. That was So you, you, so you are judging me from my best look ever, and you're expecting me. But honestly, how that's going to happen? I was 200 and freaking 40, 44, 45 pounds. I'm not going to see that. It looked like it. <laughs> I know, yeah. I did. I know. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> 
So we're going to see. If, I, if I'm lights out for Chicago, I'm going to do it. I'm not trying to bring home no second place or third place. I, I really want to make a big effort to make it to the Olympia. And I know that if I bring the right package with my structure and I come in on point on point, mm. uh, I, I won't be denied. So we'll see. But Chicago is what we're going for right now. And then, of course, like I said, Tampa's at home. It's right here, literally not even 10 minutes from my house. Um, and then I was well, I was asked at the Olympia to come back to Texas uh, by the promoter. So I'm going to head out to Texas after Tampa. Uh, when is when is yeah exactly when is Chicago? Uh, the second week of July, the twentieth, twenty to the twenty first, something like that. Twelve, thirteen I got, weeks. I gotta come to one of the shows. I gotta come. To, I, I know I go to New York Pro. I get it, right? But I gotta go to one of those shows, whether it's Texas or or Tampa. Or, I don't want to go to Chicago. Tampa is good. Tampa. Let me tell you something, because I didn't come do Tampa last year, but I did go. Tim hooked us up with some front row tickets, so we went to go watch because I wanted to watch the battle between. Uh, Labrada and um, what was it? Labrada and uh, uh, yeah, what's his name? The big dude. We just had him on here like a couple weeks ago. Jacked. Andrew no, Jack. not jacked. Um, the I want to watch. Oh him yes, Rosa. that yeah, yeah. that turned um, out to be really good. Yeah, and that show. Let me tell you something. Every year, Tim just breaks records with just numbers of freaking people. I think we were leaving, and the line was. All the way through the hotel, almost towards the highway. Yeah, you know, where people were trying to get in, you know. So Tampa is is definitely one of the shows you want to come to. Tampa shows up and shows out. It's a big show. Yeah, big, I big just show. and you know just to like to stay for the weekend or, or you know and see see what's out there. You know, I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe I'll do that because that would be that would actually be pretty pretty fun. Yeah, I think you'll love Tampa though. Yeah, that, I think it would be pretty fun because I'm going to DR with the wife. I mean, I might, I might bring her with me to the bodybuilding. Um, but my wife owns her own business. She's a guy, uh, you know, she's a hairdresser. So she's got a hair and nails. So she's got to really work around her schedule. So, you know, and of course they all work uh, Fridays and Saturdays and whatnot. But anyway, mm -hmm. cardio and doing legs. I was, I was always told never to do cardio with legs. What's, what's your, what's the opinion on that? Oh, don't do it. I don't do it. No. Well, how come you don't do it, Luke? I'm I'm pretty, pretty much too worn out after leg day to do any cardio for legs. Uh -huh. I, I do it all the other days, but I I would suggest, and then um, even my trainer suggests don't even do it during um leg day. There's no need. Right, right, yeah, okay, to, it, yeah, all right. I can see that. I can see, especially the way you train. I can definitely see that, right? But when you're I in, I, I was gonna fine. say when you're in prep, like Phil, like do you you do. Yeah. I do. We just don't do. We don't do treadmill or stamina. He he wants me to do the bike. Anything that's going to take pressure off the legs after training it. We just got to keep the metabolism going. So I do. I normally get on that little lazy rider, the little bike you lay back on. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, and that's what I get on. Hottie Shuprin does it. I mean, they he does it when he does legs. Uh, there's just no pressure there. I don't use no resistance at all. I just sit there and just cruise and watch a movie. What about you, Dorian? I mix it up. I have like a posterior chain leg day and I find if I go balls to the wall on that leg day, I can't go balls to the wall on Sunday, which is my quad day. Uh, so I find I train at like 85%, 90% on that hamstring day, hamstring glute calves. And on that day, I will do an hour cardio. However, on my quad day where I do go fucking nuts and push intensity to the max, uh, not only will I not do cardio on that training day, I won't do cardio the next day either. Really? Yep. Well, give us a breakdown of what your what your quad day is like. Uh, I'm trying to think of the last one I did. Um, I did like a free motion type of squat for four sets. Last set was a drop set. Moved into hack squats, four sets. Last set was a drop set. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to kind of a super set between doing sissy squats and leg extensions. Four rounds of that, at 16 sets total. That's all I did for, uh, that's what I did when I was out in Venice Beach. You know what's funny is it sounds, when you say drop set, people don't, the majority of people, you see, I truly believe that the majority of the people don't understand how guys, uh, like guys that are on this panel really train. They think that you go into the gym and you throw some weight around and, and, and that's working out. I, I don't think they realize that on leg day, guys at your level are literally 
with the majority of you anyway, literally either almost throwing up, passing out, can't walk. It's like, it's, it's not fun. Put it that way. You're not going, looking forward to it. It's like mandatory. You got to push yourself to you like almost dead. Uh, and I don't think like the, the average, I don't think the average fan bodybuilding fan really understands how, uh, what it's like. And I, and I think that's where it's like, uh, where it comes in. Well, um, yeah, I do cardio during leg day, so on and so forth and blah, blah, blah. But I don't think the majority of people really, really get it. You know, I don't really think they get it that, you know, especially the way like the way that Dorian trains, the way that Phil trains, I've seen Luke train. Well, every, like I said, everybody on this panel, the time under tension and the, uh, the negatives and the drop sets and the supersets, it's, 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 it's not, it's no joke. You know, it's to the point where it's past the point of fun, it's painful, right? And it's uncomfortable and it's painful and it might be uncomfortable for a day or two, too, after that. And I don't think yeah. the majority of people realize it. I, know, I really do. I really don't. I don't think the majority of people uh, realize what goes into uh, 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 an IFBB elite bodybuilders uh, workout. They don't. I just did, like some of what he said, today, yeah. drop six. I went through my whole workout, did squat, went up to 600, did drop set from 600. All the way down to two twenty five. Damn. Walk out the gym. Yeah. Right. 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 Like right people right. don't like they don't understand. Like hmm. you, it, it's more than just getting up under there and squat. Okay, anybody get up under there and squat. Right. But when you slow it down, Oof. yeah, and it's flowed up out out the pocket. Yeah, it's a difference. We oh yeah. Drop. Yeah, I like to say we're not lifting weights. We're, but we're using the waist to apply stress to our tissue. Right. Yeah, uh, like I said, I don't think the majority of people that actually go to the gym or work out understand. I don't think the majority of people that are fans, it's not taken away from them. You know, uh, I just don't think, you know, then again, again, I've I've seen and I've heard of bodybuilders that don't really have to kill themselves. So don't, you know, and they just kind of are gifted enough where they can where they can grow and they can put themselves in a position where they're at the top level, but they don't have to kill themselves. But in my opinion, I think you can only go so far with that mentality. I think even if you get to a professional level uh, because you're that gifted sooner or later, you, you're going to have to kill yourself to get to that next level, whether it's top 10 at the Olympia Olympia and IFBB win whatever it is, top, top five at, at an IFBB show, whatever the case is sooner or later, you know, uh, you can have as much natural talent as as possible, but sooner or later, you're gonna have to put that work in, where you you it's going to be painful, but you're gonna see that progress. That's just that's just my opinion. What the hell do I know? Yeah. Um. All right. What else we got going on? Let's see. All right. So there's this young guy that watches my show, and he's like 17 or 18. And he's this aspiring bodybuilder. I'm not going to mention any names. I brought this up in the Anabolic Academy, but I'm not going to mention any names. So uh, a bodybuilder that I've had I've had on on my show, and I've had plenty of bodybuilders on my show, so nobody's going to know who it is, um, started following him on Instagram. So he, he sends me, the kid sends me the clip and says, if you still know him, uh, tell him he made my day. And, you know, he sent me that, you know, so-and-so follows me, blah, blah, blah. So I texted him and I sent it to him. I said, look, you just made this kid's day. Uh, he's a huge bodybuilding fan. He's an aspiring bodybuilder, so on and so forth. And my and I sent him the what he sent me. And the response I got back was cool. And I was <laughs> like, maybe should you should be a little bit more enthusiastic this is a kid that worships the ground you walk on, you know, shouldn't it be something like my pleasure? It's, you know, tell him it's my pleasure or maybe you could DM him himself on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, that's or, what I would say. At least, at least reach out to the kid. You know? If you need, if you, if you need any help on your journey, let me know anything, anything, but are, are there, are there bodybuilders out there? And I know that the answer, but I want it from, from you guys that really are just don't really give a shit about the fans it's the fact that maybe they're younger and they've just had maybe they've been uh you know been, been entitled because they they've made it to the top so early in life or or maybe they just don't care or whatever the case may be 
I don't think that there's a, um, I mean, there's bodybuilders that around their fans is outgoing. But like you just said, just that kid simply saying that he look, you know, looks up to this person, that he's an inspiration. Uh, and then you told him, and instead of him doing the the wise thing, is reach out to the kid. That's what I w we were talking about last week when they're saying they're charging fans now to to to, to meet some of these pros and, and all this nonsense that they never did freaking last year at all. You know, this is some new thing that they came up this this year with charging fans and standing in line and mm -hmm. wheeling and dealing with supplements to move up in the line and all this nonsense. Um, but I do believe there is some pros when they're around the fans, but they're behind the scenes. To me, behind the scenes means more than when you're always in front of somebody in front of a camera because it, it's fake when when you do that. Right. Um, with me, I, you know, I'm the total opposite. Like I told you last Friday, I went to the USF for these kids. It was a really good turnout. Um, and these kids were so energetic and have so many, I felt so good. I didn't charge them for it. I yeah. just took time out of my day. I went there. I invited them to Tim's Tim, uh, advanced fit had a, a bodybuilding posing clinic Monday that just passed. And I invited them to come there and they did And I introduced them to Tim and Tim took, let me tell you something. Tim Garner spent like 10, 15 minutes talking to these up and coming. Cause they got a bodybuilding team, females mm. and males. And just to see Tim, which I look, Tim was my coach, and Tim is like a father figure to me and a mentor. Mm -hmm. To watch him as busy he is, took that time out to talk to these college students, you know what I mean? And then tell them, hey, listen, I, I have a Hurricane Bay coming. Since you got Clay Hart back and you guys are in your corner, I'm going to give you guys a free booth at my show. Really? I'm going to discount. Wow. You know, if you all want to compete, I'm going to discount it. So then I topped it. I said, Tim is going to discount it, and I'll pay the remaining balance for you guys if you want to compete. Oh, that's wow. who I am. And that's yeah. how who me and Patty. So, you know, when, when people reach out to me, I get back to everyone. I don't care mm -hmm. who they are, how young they are, whatever. That's the sad part about the sport, <clears throat> that we have these undercover uh, pros that's out idolized, but in front of a camera. They're cool, but behind the scenes, they're not cool, and that's what I do not like. I think, I think Phil, I need, I want everybody's opinion on this. I think Phil is the anomaly. I think the majority of bodybuilders, and because, and because it's the nature of bodybuilding to be somewhat selfish and everything has to revolve around you. I don't think they care about the fans as much as we would like to believe. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's true. It's yeah. True. No, I've 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 seen I've seen some, and I've been on the end of it. Like, like that. I'm I'm a fan of of bodybuilders, and you know, just you know, I you know, I know people are busy. They're training. They got things going on. You know, but when it's a it's a fan, you know, you gotta. You, they, these are the people that that you are who you are because of them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, it, without the fans, if no one's looking at you, if no one's in awe of you. Yeah, you, you you don't matter. You, that's right. That's not your your career is done. If no one's looking at you, no one's this. That's that's why we. That's why bodybuilders come out. We come out because there are fans that want to see. It. They want to see the physiques. They want to see all of our hard work. They 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 love it. Mm -hmm. and, you know that's I I just I I didn't even know that this kid was. He he asked me out of nowhere when I was doing one of my NPC shows. He wanted to take a picture. He, he was with his dad. I was going to get something to eat. <laughs> yeah. I, this, this was after the, the prejudges, you know. And yeah, I'm real hungry, but he's, I couldn't tell him no. What's not? I couldn't tell him no. And that kid, that kid's been training like a like a mad dog. Right. And he he's he's been making progress. And he 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 had a he showed like a um one of his reels, and he had the picture that I took with him when he was young. And I yeah. Said, Awesome. I made that like I was, I, I was telling my wife I was so excited I said wow can you believe this kid really you know I said I'm glad I was able to you know give him that experience I, I can imagine if I was a dickhead yeah and that, oh. actually, that kills the sport too if yes. you're a dickhead to someone you don't know what it does to the sport because the, the bodybuilder is always going to need competitors and right. we're, all, we're all here we're going to get older we're going to stop at one point and those are the future, the ones that we inspired. That's how I got, I got into the sport. Mm -hmm. I was a little kid watching the bodybuilders. 
So you know, if you don't, if you don't, you know, take care of the fans, you're gonna kill the sport as well. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Even I mean, even me, I know I have a small YouTube channel, but it reaches a lot of people and I get DMs and I get emails and I respond back to every one of them because I don't I'm not inundated with hundreds. But the few that I get every day, whether it's a DM or an email, I respond back immediately. And sometimes I put one up. I uh, I got I got a a message at the end that was so nice. I put it on my story, and it was just nice to know that I'm making an impact with this with the channel. And you know that's uh, when this whole thing happened. I mean this 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 kid. When I see young kids that want to be bodybuilders, and they're they're good like good kids and they got a good head on the shoulders, man, you should be nothing but supportive, you know? Yeah. Well, Dorian, what was the best? Well, tell us a story like Luke. What was the best scenario where you had where somebody wanted a picture or, or whatever the case may be? Man, I have a, I have a lot really. I've always tried to be very personable with people and be real and down to earth. But um, I remember I wasn't even close to being pro. I got, I went pro in 2016 and I did the Colorado state show. I didn't even do the show. I was just in the audience cause I just moved to Colorado and I'm kind of checking out the scene. So I went to check out the state show in 2010 and I got to talking with this dude in the crowd and, you know, he took pictures with me and we had a good conversation and that guy still hits me up. Here we are. Eight years later, it? 14 years later. I remember that time you took the time to talk to me, man. That was really cool. Well, he, he, I, that, that, uh, I, and I got so many people like that. Yeah. That I just meet yeah. along the way. You see, I'm kind of down to earth. Not too much of me to. That's how you make friends, you know. And All also, right. your fans. If you ain't got fans, man, you got the, the, this sport. There's there's no business to it. Right. So. Yeah, but what about you? I'm what so- was the best experience you ever had with uh, with the fan? Probably at the gym one day. Yeah. It's the, it's, it's the young guys at the gym working out one day. And they, you could tell, okay, they ain't trying to be bodybuilders, but they end up going hard. Right. And they was leaving out about the same time I'm leaving out. And the guys were like talking about some Chipotle or whatever, this and that. And they was asking me about it. So I'm like, I ain't never had it. What well, really I done had. I'm telling them I haven't never had. But I'm seeing how they was in there. It's like five bro. So I tell the guys, like, hey, come on, get in. Come ride with me. So I put them in. I don't know these guys' names. I put all of them in the truck with me and took them to Chipotle. Really? Bought all, <laughs> bought all of them Chipotle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's same great. Same guys that'll see me out, they speaking to me every day now. Yeah. You know, now that's you know, how you touch people, man. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's that, that's what it's all about. Listen, man, uh, I forgot what there's this one podcast. I forgot the name of it. I think I told you guys about it uh, last time we were talking about yeah. it when it was. But, you know, they, they say the first part of a man's life is to make mistakes. The second part is make a living. And the third part is to give back. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I get that not everybody's different and everybody's a little, you know, nobody's the same and so on and so forth. But at, at least. At the very least, um, you know, shake hands, smile, say hello, be nice. I mean, be personable. I mean, it's not going to kill you, man. It really isn't. You know, that was the one thing I didn't like about the uh, the Phil Heath documentary. Well, it was a couple of things I didn't like about the Phil Heath documentary. I was I'm still I'm a huge fan of Phil Heath. I mean, I think he's probably top. Well, you, I get into the specifics, but top five, maybe top. I got him in the number fourth place. I got. I got Ronnie, Schwarzenegger, uh, Lee Haney, and then I got Phil in fourth. I mean, but you could flip it around depending on your, your debate. But during that documentary, he didn't mention what a privileged position he was in. He didn't mention anything about the support of the fans or the people or anything like that. Eh, I don't know. I think especially bodybuilding. Look, man, you know, when it comes to the NFL, you got to get you got to get drafted into the NBA and so on and so forth. But with bodybuilding, even if you're not a top-level bodybuilder, you could be a huge inspiration for kids. There are, there are, especially now with 
with uh, Instagram and social media and being a, a fitness influencer and a bodybuilding influencer. I mean, look at Rich Piana. I mean, I I know it's just a it's just an example. However, anybody feels about it is 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 irrelevant. It's just an example of how he never turned pro. Dave Palumbo is another guy, and the the influence that they have on people is unbelievable. Like. I probably would have never started my YouTube channel if it wasn't for Dave Palumbo because I used to listen to Dave when everything was locked down during COVID. I was always a big fan of his because he's from New York. So I had met him a couple of times when I went to shows when I was younger and whatnot. And uh, I used to listen to him when I would go jogging because, you know, everything was shut down. I didn't, you know, whatever. I used to work out in my shed and then go jogging and whatever. And uh, and it was, it was Dave Palumbo. And I'm not going to lie, uh, when Fuad... When it was Fuad and um, uh, what was the, the guy that passed away? Luke Sandow. Uh, yeah, Luke. When it was those two guys, those two guys really influenced me to start the the YouTube channel during the shut because I I they were my saving grace when when everything was shut down. I don't I I, I don't know if everybody understands the impact that they have, and I think maybe when you're younger too, when you're a younger guy coming up, and you've kind of like you know. Uh, you were a great athlete. You turned pro when you're twenties and you kind of, you're hitting uh, the stage. I don't know if you, if you understand the impact you have, maybe when you get older and you understand the grind and and how people influenced you. And I think you understand how to give back, but it's just my opinion. But I think the young guys that have made it to the top early don't really grasp how they impact the fans. I don't know. That's just my opinion. What do you think? Come on, my daughter. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I don't think all the young guys, I mean, Nick Walker's pretty outgoing. Yeah, um, that's true. Uh, Derek, really outgoing. Derek is probably one of the, I, I see Derek in action just in everyday life. Um, who's the next young one? Um, Quentin. Quentin really? loves to sit on social media and answer questions. Where Patty's always listening to Quentin every day. He's very hands on with his fans. Um, Samson Dada started that up this year, being very open and, and yeah. you know putting himself out there. Um, so I can't say. I, I think I, honestly, I think it's more Individual. a higher percentage than than uh, of good younger bodybuilders that really are, um, you know, communicate with their friends than it is now. You know, a couple of years ago, the story might have been different. I mean, I've right. seen some personalities that backstage, and I like to read people when I go to shows, especially like like. At first, when I first met Andrew Jack, which was in Texas two years ago, I didn't really care for him because his, and I, you know, probably it was the competition he was zoned in. This was his breakout year, you know, and all that stuff. But like, all of us are talking in the back. Like, all us pros were talking, communicating, and he's just off in his corner by himself, not socializing. Mm -hmm. um, and even through the whole show and after the show, you know what I mean? I don't know, his just demeanor. Then, his, when he spoke after winning, he started cursing a little bit. and It was a little, you know, not PG-13 for kids out in the audience. Um, but as the years went on and I just started watching him and get to know him and met him at the Olympia and, and spoke with him, I respect the man. You know what I mean? So sometimes... It take, might take time. He might have matured. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, give you a, a little look when they first come out. I think it's more when they first come out than when they be become known. Mm -hmm. um, they got that anger drive mentality and, and stuff like that. But they got to always remember, there's, there's pros that's competing for their first time. Right. Like when I when I competed in my first show in, in, um, in uh, I think it was uh, to Canada, nobody gave me no love. I think Quinn was the only one. And Quinn was a pro yet. <laughs> and, and, no, yeah, he well, he just went pro. And Quinn was always full of energy back there. Like, damn, look at the size of that guy. You know, he's talking to me and everything. And then when I did Tampa, you know, I mean, not too many people were vocal. And then I, and then when um, uh, Labrada, he was nervous. He was a nervous wreck when he did his pro debut in Tampa. Yeah. And I just went up to Labrada. He came up to me. He said, hey, what's up, Phil? And I spoke to him. And in the back, like, I'm standing right next to him because I could see that he was really, really nervous. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I just kept communicating. Nobody was really, and this is Lebron. Nobody's really talking to him. You know what I mean? Right. Because, of course, he's a threat. He's going to come in. Everybody knows, oh, well, he's going to beat us anyway because it's Lebron. Right. You know what I mean? But he thanked me till to this day. He said, you know, Phil, out of all the pros and I did my pro debut, made me feel so comfortable. 
backstage. You know, I brought them cookies after, you know, it was just nuts. But <laughs> that's what we need to be. I understand where we're going to go battle against each other. We want to kick each other's butt and all, and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, being good sportsmen, listen, we're all out there trying to feed our family. We don't need to hate on people or not talk to them and, and, and disconnect from everybody. I know bodybuilding. We just need more love and more compassion, even with our fellow athletes, regardless of the position and the mindset that we're in. Yeah. 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 I couldn't agree more, fellas. And uh, that's what it's all about. And I think, especially uh, with bodybuilding, because if you don't build a fan base, you know, you're cutting the nose to spite your face. Um, and uh, I was a little disappointed, like I said. But at the same time, there are guys like Phil and uh, Luke, Bo, Dorian who uh, are great with the fans and and uh, give us give bodybuilders a good name. And uh, that's all really we could ask for. So, well, when, all right, the, the New York hey, Pro is when. You? Yeah, Gabo. You? Hey, I was at a show one time. Yeah. And this, this, this guy, his wife came up to me. Don't, I ain't never seen me probably. Uh -huh. Came up to me and started talking to me. Okay. It was one of the one of the competitors' wives uh -huh. came up to me and started talking to me. You know, we talking about how he looked on stage and this and that stuff like that. And after the show, she didn't know at first that I knew the guy. You know what I'm saying? But after the show, the guy came to me, and we talked, conversate, me and him, his wife, and you know, like some bodybuilders. Ain't got their nose up here, and some of them is here. Yeah. But that guy who I was talking to, he right there on your screen right there. Mm -hmm. he oh, that <laughs> oh, <stop. laughs> <laughs> no. was great. Oh, he came, I'm talking about didn't even have to do it though. He come right out there and me and Phil start chopping up out there. That is great. Said, like right. I got respect for guys like that. You know what of I'm course. Saying? Yeah. Now, listen, Paul, let me tell you something. Even in Orlando when I won, but even before I even thought I won, like, Bo isn't real, bro. Like, even, like, after prejudging, you know, me and Patty, we're talking to him, you know what I mean? And he's like, listen, man, you look good. You know, I don't know which direction it's going to flow. You know what I mean? You, you got to try to come in and look better. Like, I like people that's honest. Don't blow smoke up my ass and tell me, it, you know, it's a close, close, because I even know I had to come back better. Right. Because once again, I've been down that road in the past going up against Ian, everybody on social media going crazy, Clay Hart's got it, blah, 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 blah. And then I come back and my feelings get smashed, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. This time around, I was like, Blue, we got to come back better. I'm still a little flat. We got to come back much better because I know it's close mm -hmm. against her son. You know what I mean? Uh, but Bo kept it real, man. And he kept it real. And after I won, he came up to me, man, and he praised me. And you know I mean, and that's what I respect bodybuilders like that like you know we just they, we, they come to the show they watch you compete they support you they keep it real with their decision that they that they're physically seeing you know from you know from down from the stage and that i respect so it just bow in general like even when i like i said honestly that's as close as i got to him for the first time in orlando really we spoke but we never really like connected like we did when he was at the orlando pro so i'm very happy that you know i mean i really got to know who he is you know what i'm saying and what he was a what he's all about all right, cool. And I'm glad you told that story, man. That was awesome. Uh, Dorian, I will. Uh, uh, May, when is the New York Pro? I just pulled it up. He's 17th. May, May, May 18th. All right, whatever. Yeah. All right, cool. You have people that you're going to be backstage with? I don't know. Oh, well, Maybe. let me know. If not, I'll get a backstage pass and I'll fucking. Okay. Fucking, I'll oil you down, bro. <laughs> you gotta have someone, Dorian. You gotta have someone. You gotta have someone with you. What'd you say, Dorian? I'll pay somebody to do that. That isn't you. Okay, good, good. But I'll still, I'll still be back there. I'll still be back there. If you get one of the girls to do that shit. Don't worry, man. I I only go with female massage girls too. Don't worry. I get it. I get it. All right, gentlemen. Thank you again for a great show. Uh, as always, much love, much respect, and I will see you guys next week. Thanks again, fellas. All right, brother. You guys take it easy. Have a good one. Later.